Welcome back my friend, Chris Crone here, and I've got some hacks for happiness. In fact, I'm gonna be talking about how our emotional states can either make or break us when it comes to having success and achievement in life. Because your emotions can screw everything up or they can totally put us in the direction where we need to be. Dude, so strange, right? Like you're watching this video and you might be subscribed saying, hey Chris, show me how to make money in real estate or show me how to crush it in business. And all of a sudden I'm talking about emotions and some of you are like, dude, that's sounding awful touchy feely. But just pause for a moment. I wanna help you understand something. Um, right now we might be making decisions based on knowledge or rationale thinking or logic, but the reality is whether we take action on anything always comes down to emotion. And your emotional state is ultimately, I believe, one of the highest corollaries to how successful that you're gonna be in life. I've found that in my life. So I wanna share a few things with you. Because emotional intelligence, I believe, is far more important than knowledge. And I'm gonna say that again because you're probably like, what does he mean? I'm actually telling you that as important as knowledge and logic are, I don't think that they can hold a candle to emotional intelligence. And the reality is, is that most of us are trained to be emotional nightmares, right? I mean, we are just reacting to life. Dude, think about when I bought my very first property. First property I ever bought, I went to the closing table, I was convinced someone was trying to screw me over. I spent all day sitting at the closing office reading through every single line item, and I was terrified, I was petrified. I still took action, but I didn't make my experience very easy. Or I think about what happened when I bought my first house, and it went vacant, and I had to cover the mortgage. I was prepared for it, but was I mentally prepared for it? The problem is in the game of real estate, it's a game of wanters and don't wanters. When you're watching this, you're like, Chris, if I can get my hands on a good deal, I'm gonna be a wanter. But if you do things wrong, you got the wrong mindset, you're gonna become a don't wanter. And the problem is that don't wanters are sitting often on piles of cash and they're just like someone, take my real estate, take my problem and they don't often do it the right way. So today, I wanna to train you on the intelligence that will help you succeed in real estate more than anything. And what I want you to understand is that there are three ways ultimately to alter your state or alter your emotion code. I've been teaching this to people for years and I've had the privilege of actually even mentoring directly with Tony Robbins and learning specifically from him his three top ways of altering state. And we've got some overlap here. So let me break it down for you. So years ago, if you stepped in my camp and said, Chris, mentor me and teach me how to make millions of dollars, how to crush it in real estate, how to live the life of my dreams, I would tell you that there are three things that you need to do to master your emotions. The first thing is that you need to master language. We don't think in feelings, we think in words. Language is the building block to life. And the reality is, is that until you're trained, most of us are using our language very inappropriately. For example, oh, I can't do that. Dude, if you hang out with me, I will never, ever, ever say I can't do something. Do you know how detrimental it is to plant that seed and then to water, nurture it, and then produce evidence that says you can't do crap? That's why most people want more, but they don't have the ability to do more because they don't believe that they can do more. So your language, I want you to imagine for a moment that the universe is German, which for all intents and purposes means literal. And if the universe is German, then that means it's gonna take everything you say at face value. So I know I've got some self-deprecators out there that say things like, um, oh, you know, I'm not as good as him or her, or yeah, I'm really ugly, or you'll put yourself down to try to make someone laugh. Don't do that. I'm just telling you right now, that is not good for your concept of self. That's not good for your self-esteem. That's not good for your emotions, because even though you're making someone laugh or you think that you're lifting someone up by pulling yourself down, dude, that's a nasty cheap shot. You can't afford that. You can't afford negativity. It's too expensive. Here with the language, I want you to think about your language. I want you to think about how you're leveraging your language. Are you using it to empower yourself? Like for example, when I go to the gym and I find myself saying things like, oh my gosh, I got this. I can lift that. I make this happen. I love my life. Everything goes my way. Dude, I, people start hearing some of my beliefs and some people get pissed if they don't have background on who I am. What do you mean everything goes your way? Well, I understand that we are self-fulfilling our own prophecies. So guess what? If you think you're stupid, you should call yourself a financial genius. Why? Because you'll start doing what financial geniuses do. You're gonna start pursuing education and training and curriculum, seeking to become a what? You're gonna fulfill the prophecy of becoming a financial genius. So number one, you gotta play with the game of language and you gotta start treating yourself way better. 
The second way, again, if you want to be successful in business, life, happy, marriage, real estate, anything, I want you to listen. It's going to come down to language to master your emotions. And number two, you've got to master your focus. Take language away for a moment. The things that we think about produce feelings. So for example, if you're remembering your honeymoon night and that this is a good memory, then you're harnessing a certain energy or emotion. Or maybe you're thinking about one of your happiest moments from childhood with mom and dad. Or you're thinking about a friend that is your best friend that you've been spending time with. Whatever you choose to focus on expands. And so the question is, what are you expanding? What are you practicing? And what are you rehearsing? Some of you every day spend hours in your past thinking about everything crappy going on, or you're stuck deep in your future thinking about all the things that you have anxiety and worry about, and you're not present, there's no power in that moment, and you're actually recalling the things that make you feel sad, angry, frustrated, and I have two words of advice for you. Stop it. Like, don't do that. It's not good, right? The third thing, and this one comes specifically from Tony Robbins, I loved it when I, when I learned this from him, is that when you're in a low emotional state, when you've got negativity abounding, yes, you've got the tool of language, yes, you have the tool of focus, but you know what he also says? He says physiology or motion. Motion creates emotion. Like literally, our body is, is, is powered by all sorts of chemistry and hormones, and one of those are endorphins, and the only way to activate them is if you get physical. So literally, if you just start standing up, you jump up and down, you go for a run, you go for a hike, you go for a walk, your energy naturally what? It elevates. You're vibrating in a different state. Now, how do you use these three things to aid you in becoming happier? How do you aid, use these things to help you overcome a challenge or a hardship? How do you get yourself just through bad negative energy? Here's what it looks like. If you were standing in front of me and I was your mentor and you were my student, I would say, that the moments in life, the patterns that you have probably on a daily basis where you shut down or go negative, tune out, feel anger, sadness, what I want you to do is start leveraging a different language as you focus on a, a resonating match of memories in life that have an energy that you want to feel and that you add motion to it. Here's a case in point. I was working with a close friend of mine. She was going through a divorce and basically she would go into this hysteric, you know, panic attacks and had all this sadness overwhelm her. And she would stay for hours in the state and do this almost every single day. And what I did is I asked her, and now I'm asking you, I said, what's the right language? Well, she was focusing on the wrong language. I'm alone, I'm betrayed, nobody loves me. I said, change that language for what you do want. I'm loved, I'm supported, everything goes my way. Different language, different vibration, and a different outcome and feeling. Now we're starting to command our emotions. Then I said, tell me about one of your favorite memories. And she said, I was in the kitchen with my son, and my mom was there, and we had the music on, and we were just dancing. And we were laughing because my little boy was dancing hysterically, and we were all just dancing like wild goofballs. Happy memory. You take that happy memory, you combine it with the right language, and then I said, I want you to go for a walk, because she likes taking walks. So I said, go for a walk. It'll, it's gonna start releasing the endorphins as you take yourself places, leverage the right kind of language. I want you to do that while you're harnessing your favorite memories and focus on those. You put those three together, and you are going to change your emotional state. And this is how I measure emotional intelligence in you. When something goes wrong, when you feel sad, when you feel bad, when you get hot under the collar, do you have the ability in the moment to stop recognize that you're in a negative state that isn't working, and then pull out tools that dramatically change and shift your emotional energy. Because if you do that, that is emotional intelligence. And bottom line is for you to be happy in life, and especially successful, if you're all about achievement, if you're all about figuring out how to do things you haven't done before, what you really need are tools to help you become an emotional genius. And just try it on right now, out loud, at home, wherever you're watching this video. I'm an emotional genius. Good, that sounded good, but this time say it with more confidence. I'm an emotional genius. And try this one, I love my life. And everything goes my way, right? That's positive, that's powerful. Harness your favorite memories of the past, add in some physicality, work out in the mornings. Um, several times throughout the day, get your endorphins rolling and going, bring out the happy. You do all those things, you combine them, and you've combined three powerhouse tools that give you the power to alter your state. 
Hey, thank you for watching this video. If you liked the content, this is just the tip of the iceberg smidgen of what I do when people join me at my live life-changing events. Roughly once a quarter, I've got people that fly in from all over the world and they get with me for several days and what I'm doing is yes, I'm, I'm instructing you on how to build wealth and yes, character and yes, how to do real estate but I'm combining the mindset in there that glues it all together which creates truly a life-changing experience and I'd love for you to have that experience because I know that by the time that event's done, you're gonna look back and say, my life will never be the same again. So all you gotta do is click the link below, learn more about the next upcoming event, speak with a member of my team if you got any questions, and I'll look forward to hopefully seeing you there.